my grandparents from my father's side. <laughs> My mother had epilepsy, so she couldn't. I would like to invite to the stage David Serrero, the filmmaker, <laughs> really yay, <laughs> of the United States of fashion designer Ellie Tahari. David is the multi-talented French-Moroccan acclaimed opera singer, actor, producer, and director. You have been described as the Swiss army knife of talent. <laughs> David, please introduce your film and Ellie Tahari. And and after the film, we'll have a Q and A. The chocolate cake, keep it for me. Oh yeah. Leave it there. Leave it back. I don't care about the movie. I care about the cake. Okay, good, good, good. So, when David talks, I want you to know we'll be back after the film. We'll have a Q and A with Ellie and David. So David, Thank I'm gonna you. move over. Yes, this one is working. Yes, yes. yes. How is everyone feeling tonight? Yeah. How is everyone feeling? Yeah. Okay, first of all, a big round of applause for this amazing lady, Wendy Hardy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank Mr. Leslie Rich. Yeah. Leslie, where are you? Thank you. So let me tell you, Leslie was the first one, I think, top three or top five person in the world who booked that movie. So, thank you, Leslie. And I'm going to tell you something. I made him a promise. All the next movie I will do, the Florida premiere, will be for Leslie. Exactly. Uh, actually, he booked the movie. The movie was not even finished. <laughs> I promise you. So I put images on my bombs right, to fill it up. But I would like to thank also Li Lisa Barash. Lisa, thank you. Thank you so much. The only person I thought I needed a passport to come to Miami, but thank you anyway. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank Mr. Eli Tahari. Thank you. So if you want to buy something from the Elita Harry brand, you can ask me. I have great connection, great discounts. We can make it work, okay? Uh, from the bottom of my heart, Mr. Scott Curie from Anchor Communications. <laughs> Mr. Scott Curie is uh, the top greatest PR in the world, and he was so helpful in the movie. You will see there is a scene in Central Park. There were people walking, and he even... He <laughs> He was even here, you know, to, 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 make, to, to ask people to stop. Uh, of course, special thought for CJ Busco. Um, I want to thank Judy Levis Krug. I'm sorry. Krug, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Levis Krug, thank you. I thought, I've been told that if I mention you, I'm go you're gonna, it's gonna help the process of my green card. So thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's been 12 years, I'm still waiting. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, I want to thank Eileen Alcabez and her wonderful team of PR. Thank you, Eileen. Eileen, where are you? Thank you. Okay, thank you. And, of course, I would like to thank Mr. David Menasher. Thank you very much for his great support of the arts. Thank you, David, really. So, let me tell you a few words about the movie. Uh, this was my very first documentary, okay? So, uh, it was so interesting how to put the life of a fashion designer, because I don't come from the fashion world, but I wanted everyone to understand also how fashion works, you know? But what this documentary, I hope, will bring to everyone is that everyone could understand that behind each piece of clothes, there is a story, right? You would know the story of a man who started out of nothing and who became one of the biggest fashion designer in the world. I will tell you, 
I will tell you also that there are only three people in the world who created their fashion companies with zero, who made it a billion dollar company, not billion in Bitcoin, like the real money, you know, <laughs> like billion dollar company and still are the sole owners of their companies. There is Giorgio Armani, Ralph Lauren, I've been told he's Jewish, but he's Ashkenazi. It doesn't matter. He's Ashkenazi, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Ralph Lauren and Mr. Eli Tahari right here. You have no idea how many, and I'm sure all of you, who has a daughter or niece who has worked for Eli Tahari in the store. There are so many. He gave thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs to people. Each of them pay taxes. He paid millions and millions of dollars of taxes. His company paid millions and millions and millions of dollars of taxes. All of that happened because this little kid built this empire that he has today. He came here in America without anything. This is why I called it the United States of fashion designer of Anita Hari, because I believe that each person has his own equation. You know, you go there, then this happens to you, then you lost this, then this times two, divided by three, etc. But in the equation, the United States, this great country in the world, the greatest country in the world, America, give it up, yeah. You know, only in America there is a film festival that serves you food. <laughs> I tell you, man, we, I've been to Russia for film festivals. You know, first they, not only they don't give you food, but they should. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but um, uh, really, you have no idea, since I entered the Tahari world when I started to do that movie, how many people reach out to me. I had recently kids, really, from Iran, because that movie was also played in Iran, in film festivals in Iran. Think about it in a way, you know, in Iran, in the Iranian film festival, but also uh, it played uh, in Dubai, by example. And a lot of Iranian kids wrote to me and told me, look, I'm so happy. Now I want to become a fashion designer and come to work in America. I couldn't dream of it before. But now, I'm allowed to dream of it because Eli Tahari did it. That's the beauty of it, exactly. And so many women, and I will end up with this, but so many women wrote to me, for the movie of course, you know, <laughs> wrote to me to tell me, please say thank you on my behalf to Mr. Tahari. Tell him thank you. And I was like, why? You know, I want to know why, you know. And they said, because his business suits, because the clothes that he created, I was wearing that piece of clothes, you know what I'm talking about. I was wearing his piece of clothes when I had my first big job interview, you know? So I felt confident, and from that started my career, and I created my own business later, etc. So all these people have one thing in common, is that the closing of Mr. Tahari, the love that he puts behind each of his closing. And we will see in the documentary how that process works. Like he chooses the best pieces of textile, schmutz. We have Ashkenazi here? <laughs> Who is Ashkenazi here? Of course, the best table, all the patrons, you know. Ashkenazis, they have a credit score that no one can beat them up, right? It starts at 950, the credit score, right? You know, Sephardim were like 600, so anyway. So, <laughs> so what I wanted to tell you is that they felt strong. They felt the beauty, the freedom, the desire to be better. All of that, ladies and gentlemen, has one word. It's America, right? And this is what, this is the build of someone who started out of nothing and who brought so much to this world. Again, on the filmmaking point of view, I'm just bringing you the story. Don't expect to see what you see on Star Wars. But what you, what you want to see, what I want to say is that it also pays a tribute to all these people who came to Israel without anything, you know, how they arrived in the 
a refugee camp, the Mabarot, you know, and how the, the courage of these people, we're so spoiled these days, right? We want something, we order it on Amazon, we receive it the next day, right? But back in the days, it was not the same thing. These people had to go to knock on doors to make things happen. You know, so he pays also a tribute to all this generation. Anyway, I'm gonna let you watch the movie. I hope you're gonna like it. If you want to give me some extra cash, I'll be right here. <laughs> but <laughs> from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much to the Boca Raton Jewish Film Festival for having us, Mr. Tahar, Mr. Curie, and myself. We love you. Have a great movie. Thank you. In Tehran, with the Iranian life. Hey. You guys enjoyed it, really? Yeah. They said, just so you know, I ate all the dessert. <laughs> Forget it. No, thank you so much. Thank you. It was really beautiful. So we sit? Yes, if you okay. would like to sit, that would yes, be great. Yes, let's sit. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Eli Tahari. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to tell you that I got to watch Ellie Tahari's face during the film and the biggest smile. So you know how much he loves what he does and how much we love what he does. So David, how did you meet or get that personal connection with Ellie Tahari? You know, it looks like the presidential debate. Yes. Right? Guys, this is great. I love Saturday. <laughs> no, so hi. Did you say again? I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, how did you meet and get that personal connection oh, okay. with Ellie Tahari? First of all, I think in my life I've done something good because God brought me Ellie Tahari. That, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. No, to, to be honest with you, um, uh, I was producing a film festival in New York and uh, and I was like, okay, who can we honor this year? And uh, I wanted to open a little bit more than honoring a filmmaker, a Sephardic filmmaker. Uh, there are three of them in the world anyway. So, <laughs> so then I thought of Ellie and I reached out to Ellie and uh, Ellie was so nice. And then COVID happened, you know. Uh, COVID, you don't know what it is in Florida, but this is a virus. <laughs> That happened in, you know, in New York, and that came, you know, from somewhere, and then, you know, people were wearing masks, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, I, I reached out to Ellie and said, look, I'm not doing any shows, not doing any of that, so I would love to do a, document, a documentary about you, and, and like all the great people, they, they never say no, they're always open to any ideas, so, and the rest is history, you know. Thank you. Ellie, uh, how do you feel about uh, David wanting to make this film about you? Uh, I always wanted uh, to have some kind of a documentary or something for my children. And when David approached me, I said, great, but he did everything. He did uh, writing, he did uh, editing, he did the music, he did, uh, he did everything himself and I like that about somebody that uh, Artapanua remind me of myself. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that means a lot. Hey, David, uh, are you considering making a feature film about Eli Tahari? There are so many television shows that have uh, lots of episodes. I don't know, I think he got some good material here. Right, he definitely does. And actually, uh, the biggest challenge I had in the movie was how to condense 40 years of fashion. You know, and fashion is something that moves almost every month, you know. Uh, how to bring 40 years of fashion plus his history of his parents and, you know, and how he's building and his entrepreneurial and his success story and how he moved on and the right choices that he made and he crossed all the eras. How to bring all of that in an hour movie, you know? Uh, because Jews after one hour want to eat, right? So I knew the movie cannot be more than an hour, right? So, <laughs> I love this table. They love uh, all my jokes. I love this table. The table is on me. I love 
love that table too. What is that table? <laughs> That's Nina and Marty Rosenzweig. Rosenzweig? Yeah, Rosenzweig. Yes. Rosenzweig. Yes. You know Rosenzweig? It sounds like a country in Europe when you're not paying taxes, <laughs> right? You know. Anyway, so <laughs> no, no, but uh, no. But seriously, it was really the biggest challenge. So. Yes, I wish I could do, you know, a, a, a series of 20 episodes, but on the other end, I got a call from the uh, national broadcaster in Israel and uh, the production team that is doing Fauda. You guys know Fauda? Okay, the same production. You guys know? Yeah, it's a small TV series. You know, it's no, no big deal about it. <laughs> and, uh, and they actually made an offer to do a full TV series about the life of Ellie. So we will see. Where, where it goes, because again, he paid a tribute to all these Israelis, you know, who, who went to Israel and what was Israel at that time, you know, also let's not forget all of that. So. Uh, thank you. So I'm going to ask one more question and then we're going to open it up. So uh, the next one is for Ellie and with no formal design training, how did you just start designing? Uh, I never thought I was a designer, but... Uh, I was working at the electrician and I learned in the garment center and I learned a lot. And at night I used to work in a boutique selling clothes and you, you hear it's not what you want to do, it's what the women want to wear and you got to go with your audience. And I learned that in working in a shop, in a boutique. And uh, when I learned what their head was, uh, it was easy to make clothes. Just if I can add what was also so unique about uh, Ailey, and it was a game changer at that time, is that now a lot of the fashion companies, they have a whole department of marketing and everything. And they bring you 20 pages of uh, uh, marketing results telling you why you should go to that blue color, why the dress should be cut more like this. And Ellie, his biggest weapon were his ears, you know, and he was listening to really the, 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 the clients, the customer, and he was just asking to five customers, let's say, why you like that dress? They say, oh, I like it because it moves like this. Oh, I like it. this one, I don't like it too much because it makes me sweat. Oh, this one, it makes me more like this, more, you know what I mean? Um, I'm answering only to the Rosenbaum. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, but he, he was smart to really listen and everything he has done was always toward the point of view of the customers. This is why he has customers with such a longevity who's been buying his clothing for the last, you know, many decades. And now their own daughters are going there to buy his clothing because he was listening, you know, and then processing in his head to create what his clients wanted. Thank you very much. This is your first documentary, and I think you are on your way also. I'd like to talk like to you on the fact that you quoted. You had a lot of wonderful quotes by Ellie which I think we can all really result, see the results. I'm wearing an Ellie Tahari blouse, and I am not a size three or five, and I would like you to do a little bit more for the tens, the twelves, and the fourteens. Uh, I just wanted to ask Ellie, Joan Rivers is my family, and I'd like to know, how did you meet her, and was it when she was doing Fashion Police? I, I loved her, and uh, when you bring up her name, it saddened me uh, because I was very close to her. But the person that was even closer to her and introduced me to her, sitting right here, Scott Carey. Thank you, Scott. I'm Joan Crescione. I had a business in the same building that you were in 525 7th Avenue. You saved our lives. We were being struck by this uh, union and they wouldn't deliver anything of our product to our company, my daughter and I. You were so kind to have all of our business, everything sent up to you. Your company snuck it down to my company. 
and you saved us because we survived the Soviet Union and we survived and we became very popular and very famous ourselves. So we were Krishoni Designs, the ones with the big shoulders and the rhinestones in the front, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, I remember the story very well, and you had a, be a very beautiful daughter. Uh, that's right, that I liked a lot. Wow. <laughs> Maybe. How do you adjust your designs when you sell to a place like Kohl's as opposed to a Saks or Gerdos? Well, when I do the collection, I use very expensive fabric, very expensive make, very expensive trim. And somebody, when you do a collection for calls, you use less expensive material, less expensive make. So the price has to fit in the mix. So that's how you adjust the prices by using less expensive materials. I have a request too. Sure. Can I have? Uh, can I ask David sitting next to me here to sing us a song? <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Yes. So where, where, where are you going? No, no, I'm no, going no, to you're not going. No, but you can hear it here. You know. <laughs> so what, what would you like me to sing? Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to sing something in Hebrew, right? Because he's from Jerusalem. Right? You guys okay? Okay. Avirarim about it uh, a lot because I have two young children and I see my son is 20 my daughter is 17 now and things are not as easy as they used to be but my son is so good he's better than me so I'm not worried about him uh, but things is much tougher in the fashion business today that the war when I uh, started. Before, when I started, there were, if you can produce it, people will buy it. Today, is you gotta watch what you produce, and you gotta, there is more product than customer. Before, there were more customer than product. So it's much more difficult today. That's the truth. We know nothing about your personal life. Are you single? Well, let me ask no <laughs> Yes, I'm single. You what? You're you single? Yes. But, um, no? <laughs> Do you want me to nice No, I, I had personally two marriages that were both totally unsuccessful. The first one she left, the second she stayed. <laughs> That's... That's not easy, folks, let me would tell you. you I met my ex-wife on Groupon. Would you like... Now, what? 
Rose's Would you wife. like to meet a nice, beautiful woman? Yeah. Well, can we talk about it after? <laughs> <laughs> well, he can offer her nice clothes, you know, that helps already, you know. I don't have a question. I just want to say that this was an incredible evening. We are delighted to have had you, both of you here. We love your sense of humor. We love your fashion. And we dearly appreciate you being here tonight. I actually have a question. I don't know, is my mic on? Yes. What are your plans for the business when you retire? Will the business be continued by members of your family? Uh, my son he made his own collection uh, when he was 17 and uh, I don't think he likes it so much. He likes real estate. So, Persian real estate. Persian, yes, uh, merchants. Uh, my daughter is an artist and uh, she's too young to decide so I made myself an easy life. Are we selling online and that's what I'm concentrating on and I have, I used to have 300 people in the company and besides all the factories and all uh, the people on the road and now we have a dozen people uh, and it's doing much better than ever before so I'm very thankful to that. Yes. He's, I'm sorry, uh, fresher than ever. I can tell you that. His mind is so sharp. And did you like that sequence when he's going to the subway? Yes. Really? Now, isn't that great that he still goes... You can never get old when you have that thing. It means he goes to the subway to see how the fashion is uh, evolving. So we had to get everybody blurry, you know, but that's what it is, you know. But. But otherwise, that's, I think, very interesting. He's fresher than ever. He makes always great decisions. He's a chacham, you understand? Like tzaddik, you know, and taking the time for all of it. But you told me to say all this. Thing. <laughs> you told me, say that and that and that. Let, Les, do you have someone? Um, my very, one of my very first suits. I was a criminal defense attorney at the Legal Aid Society. I have a Tahari suit, I still have it 40, 40 years later. It doesn't go out of style. I know that's not good for business for you. <laughs> I've since bought many of your uh, beautiful designs. You clearly love women, and a man like you can dress women beautifully. That's the secret, I think. And um, I hope your clothes look beautiful and in coals on my family's mannequins, Bernstein display mannequins and clothing forms all over the country. Give us the card, we're going to order. <laughs> and um, we're a fourth generation business so far, maybe fifth one day. But I need to know, do you make petites for petite women? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, petite is... Uh special segment for itself. Uh, a size zero is, uh, is uh, I don't know what size you are, but uh, petite, uh, smaller sizes are usually, we make them to fit the petite girls. Uh, come, we're gonna take a measurement. <laughs> Uh, ask David, what are the next projects that you're working on? Well, I want to buy the company. <laughs> I wish I would. No, no. Uh, well, thanks to that first documentary I did, now I have five uh, movies that I'm working on, you know. So also five documentaries that I've been asked. This movie got selected in more than a hundred film festivals. And again, this is my favorite night ever. I tell you honestly. So, uh, everyone here is it's... a witness that, um, that David said that we get the Florida premiere. Florida premiere, all, it's on the camera. Florida witnesses. premiere, all the movies. Uh, Leslie, you said one million dollar per screening, right? <laughs> you get the premiere. You know, for that price, I give you my ex-mother-in-law. Um, 
No, uh, I mean, I will continue to do movies, and I have a big musical coming up in, uh, in May in New York about the Ten Commandments. Wow. Uh, Ten Commandments, uh, I'm going to play Moises, you know. I don't believe Moises' story, to be honest with you. You guys know the Moises story, 40 years in the desert? I don't believe that story. You guys believe? I don't believe that story. Do you know one Jewish man who will stay 40 years without calling his mom? <laughs> right? 40 years, I don't believe it. Okay, so yeah, that, yeah, this will be my next uh, project, you know, but one thing I can tell you is that for the rest of my life, I mean, now I don't, I don't have kids, I hope one day I will have kids and grandkids and all of that, but all of them will know always to be grateful to this man and to keep this man as an inspiration, and I hope that a lot of kids, a lot of Jewish kids, a lot of kids from all over the world, whether it's in Iran or in Israel or in America, will know that when you have a good heart, when you have a good soul, and when you have the desire, you spoke about success. I don't even think he was motivated by success. I think he, he just wanted to do things, you know. Uh, but uh, I will always stand by his side, and I will always be at the first row to applaud him and support him. Thank you. Well, uh, if thank you. there aren't any more questions, I want to thank David Serrero and Ellie Tahari for being with us at Cinebash and the kickoff of our Judy Levis Crew Book Raton Jewish Film Festival. I had the best night of my life. It was incredible and I enjoyed it immensely. Thank you very much, David. So I'm very, very happy to have been here tonight for this wonderful event of the screening of my film, The United States of Fashion Designer, Eli Tahari, at this great film festival, the Boca Raton Jewish Film Festival. I'm so grateful to all the team, to Leslie Rage, to Lisa Barash, to Wendy, to everybody, to Judy, to all the great team, the great people. We had a blast, and the food, amazing. Thank you so much for the master, Eli Tahari, for coming all the way from New York to here. He came to be here for us for this amazing event. This is one of the best film festivals I have ever experienced. And guess what? All my premiere, they're gonna happen over here. Don't look for it, it's gonna be here. Thank you so much, so honored that you guys love my movie. And we'll see you soon. April 18, there is the premiere at Lincoln Center, and we hope to see you there. We love you so much, thank you.